Our next contestant is Georgina Wood, and the title of her presentation is Restoration and Future Proofing of Sydney's Underwater Forests. I want everyone to close their eyes. Now imagine that you're in a vast forest. You're at the base of a large tree. You look up and see branches rustling in the canopy. You look a little closer. You see creatures with 10 legs or three hearts, beaks, suckers, fluorescent colors, and some have just one foot. More than 500 animals cling to the tree's swaying branches, but they don't seem to weigh it down. Why? Because the forest that you're in is underwater. Now open your eyes. What I've just described to you is not a prehistoric or mythological scene, but it could soon be. Around the world, underwater forests created by large brown seaweeds are in decline. Crayweed, the dominant canopy-forming seaweed on the East Australian coast, is the food and home for unique communities of animals. It supports up to eight times more abalone and crayfish than any other habitat. It captures carbon from the atmosphere, releasing precious oxygen in return. But crayweed and all of its benefits disappeared from Sydney almost 40 years ago. Out of sight, out of mind, the disappearance of these underwater forests has largely gone unnoticed but things are changing. In my PhD, I'm bringing crayweed back. We do this by transplanting crayweed back onto the rocks under the waves. It's a bit like underwater gardening. To enhance success, I'm using genetic tools to look at the DNA of remaining crayweed populations. Basically, it's bad to be inbred, right? Well, it's bad for crayweed too. So we're promoting genetic diversity, or having as many genes as possible in one population, as this can enhance overall health and the capacity to adapt to future change. In my research, I found two underlying genetic groups, symbolized by the yellow and green on my slide, and used this to create a mixture of genetically diverse populations that we put back on bald reefs. We've now transplanted crayweed to 10 sites across Sydney, and in many of these, it's survived. It's even reproduced. But interestingly, this has revealed that crayweed from one population has higher survival and condition than others. And I'm currently looking at the next generation to see how this might influence their long-term health. This research is important as it will allow us to pick the best parents to maximize success, restoring underwater forests and ensuring that we continue to have them into the future. Thank you. 